welcome everyone welcome to another class in this class we are going to learn about virus host interaction and basically the host i am talking here is humans as we are so selfish that we don't consider other but consider only the human species right <laughs> okay it was just a joke but let let us begin with the topic okay now let us say there is a virus in the environment and it affect the host you know how it adheres to it and will infiltrate then uh, hijacks the its everything machinery and can cause cell lysis okay and cell lysis happens when there are too many viruses of course if it affect by bacteria then it can go into two various cycles that is lytic cycle and lysogenic cycle okay so uh, there is a time when when we observe that virus if affect the host there will be no infection and why is that okay it is because that virus can become abortive abortive in the sense uh, that some genes let us say let me draw it okay let us say this is the genome of viruses and this is xvr this gene xvr this gene is the gene responsible which can cause infection in host okay now what happens is uh, for some reason this gene got mutated okay let's say this is the this is red mutation in it and now there is no infection now uh, although the this genome of virus is still inside the host but since there is no infection that and that is called abortive infection okay because there is no infection uh, but there are times when some helper virus they will come and uh, they will do what they will uh, you know attach to these abortive attach or merge with these defective viruses and it can again lead to infection okay now viruses they enter the host need to avoid various immune response in the cells now these are actually how host tend or tries to avoid the viruses okay now the first point is mucosal secretions you must have heard about mucosal secretion that is mucus right now whenever you get cold your uh, nose start running that running nose secretes mucus okay and that fluid which comes out of it is mucus now these kind of mucus are present in various parts of body and if you go down the esophagus also like this food pipe uh, there is also the presence of mucus and some cilia also ciliated epithelial okay ciliated epithelial and uh, second thing which it has to cope up is the ph of the body as you know there are uh, there is major ph difference if you go from here to here like uh, this area in our mouth is slightly acidic and when the food reaches along with viruses and bacteria it reaches stomach and that stomach is more acidic compared to our mouth how is that it is because our stomach releases hcl that's uh, another story and when it further goes down the ph become alkali it uh, goes from 1 literally ph of stomach from 1 to 2 let us say 2 to 7 to 8 okay uh, and these digestive secretions they also kills the viruses uh, and the next stage is antibodies i think antibodies will be clear to you all easily see how antibodies attach to this virus and uh, it will just degrade them or take them to another cells which can consume them just like macrophages macrophages of blood see these are macrophages okay monocytes they are basically monocytes themselves then comes interferons okay now interferons are specialized you can say immunity part of immunity they activate whenever they sense single stranded rna or double stranded rna they act as signal which cause interferons to lock that cell which is infected by virus okay so that virus cannot spread to another cells then comes nk cells these nk cells are natural killer cells they don't they literally don't discriminate if someone is defective they will just kill it hai na these uh, nk cells are present throughout the body and they recognize changes in the specific molecules of the infected cells okay let us say this is our cells and here is the receptor and uh, due to presence of virus here okay this receptor is somehow got modified now what will happen the nk cells will come and they will wholly degrade this cell okay the nk cell binds and kill the whole cells uh, not as specific they are not as specific as b cell or t cell right b cells are for antibody production and t cells they are thymus matured cells then comes apoptosis apoptosis is what we call in the biology as the programmed cell death okay 
now you can say as the cell somehow get defected uh, it's some material releases out of cell like phosphotidyl uh, inositol it will get released out of the cell and this will uh, make its signal to kill this particular cell okay now this cell will survive but this will be killed why it will be killed it will be killed because signal is such that this cell has to die and this phosphotidyl inositol can also release out of the cell in the viral infection also then comes rna splicing although this rna splicing is very important for our rna production which is uh, it you know it cuts introns and exons separates them and joins the exons after that okay and this happens for rna also since let us say this is the um, rna of rna virus double stranded rna virus and uh, when the splicing snuffs etc will come they will cut this section now only this and this part remains but these two are non-functional and it will ultimately saves host from virus so that's how you see viruses and host interact if they comes to a system and if we talk about viruses they have to evade all those you can say dodge all those all these uh, part of immunities in order to infect the host and that's it for now thank you very much and see you soon